The command line is one of the most unique and recognizable components of the interface. It's been there since the very earliest releases of AutoCAD, when the program ran under the DOS operating system. The command line is where we find instructions and options when using commands, features, and functions. Let's do something very basic. I'm going to click to start the line command. As soon as I click that tool, notice that in the command line area, the command prompt tells me what to do next. In this case, the command prompt is telling me to specify the first point of the line. Once I click to specify that first point, notice that the command prompt changes. Now it's asking me to specify the next point, or I could choose Undo to undo the selection of the first point. In this case, I'll click to select the next point. Again, as soon as I do, the command prompt changes again to prompt me to specify the next point or undo my selection. Once I've drawn two line segments, however, notice that the prompt changes. Inside the square brackets, it's showing me additional options. In this case, the close option will create another line segment drawn from the end of the current line segment back to the very first point I selected when I started the line command, or I can undo the line segment that I just created. The information inside the square brackets are options, and I can choose one of these options by either typing the capital letter, by right-clicking with my mouse and choosing the option from a shortcut menu, or by clicking on the option right in the command window. For example, I'll click on the close option to create one more line segment from the end point back to my original starting point. This also ends the line command. By default, the command line is actually a command window that is floating just above the model and layout tabs. But notice that it can be relocated. You can dock the command line at the top or bottom of the program window, or let it float to maximize the drawing area. The undocked command line is displayed in a single row that floats above the program window. It includes a semi-transparent prompt history that enables you to display up to 50 lines of history without affecting the drawing area. You can press the F2 key at any time to expand the command line to see additional command line history. Note that you can also click the button at the right end of the command line to expand the history. When the command line is undocked, you can snap it to the right or left edge of the program window or to a docked palette. For example, I'll open the Layer Properties Manager palette and then snap the command window to the edge of the palette. When I expand the palette, it rolls out over the command line. But if I turn off Auto Hide, notice how the command line remains snapped to the edge of the palette. And if I resize the palette, the command line moves accordingly to maintain its position relative to the palette. When I close the palette, the command line snaps to the edge of the program window. If I drag the left end of the command window, I can float it again. To dock the command line, simply drag it to the very top or very bottom of the drawing area until you see it expand and then release the mouse button. To float it again, simply drag it away. If you want to place the command window at the edge of the frame without snapping, simply press the control key while moving it. Whether the command line is floating or docked, notice that a command icon helps identify the command line and indicates when the program is awaiting a command. You can click on this icon to quickly view and launch the most recently used commands. When a command is active, the command name is always displayed on the command line along with an icon. For example, notice that when I start the line command, you can see the name of the command and the line command icon. You can also control the appearance of the command line. 
When you click the Customize button, you can then choose from a menu to adjust various autocomplete settings, change the number of lines in the command prompt history, adjust the transparency of the command line, or access the options dialog. For example, if I choose Transparency, the program displays the Transparency dialog so that I can adjust the general and rollover transparency settings for the floating command line. Although you can't select geometry behind the command line, being able to see through the command line can help you see what you're doing. Right now, the command line is 70% opaque, but it becomes completely opaque when I move the cursor over the command line. To see this, I can click the Click to Preview button. I'll click OK to close the transparency dialog. Note that you can also close the command line by clicking the Close button. If you do this, the program will display a warning and also let you know that if you do close the command line window, you can display it again by pressing the Control key and the 9 key simultaneously to reopen the command line window. Even though I've just closed the command line window, there's still a separate command line text window that we can enable at any time by pressing the F2 key. This is what is known as the text window. It not only shows the command line, but you can also scroll back to see up to 400 lines of previous commands and command prompts. Inside this window, you can actually highlight commands, right-click and copy them to the Windows clipboard, and then paste them back to the command line or even copy and paste the text into a Word document. I can close the text window by pressing the F2 key again or by clicking its close button. Pressing Control 9 will restore the command line window to its previous location. Many longtime users find that it's often faster to start commands by typing. When you type in the command window, the program automatically completes the entry with a command or command alias. For example, if I type the letter L, notice that the program displays a list of all the commands that start with that letter. As I type more letters, the list gets filtered to show just those commands that match what I've typed. I can start the command at any time by selecting it from the list. Notice the colors of the various elements of the command line, such as the active prompt background, the command history background, and, when I start the circle command, the blue color of the command option keywords. These can also be changed as needed. To modify these settings, click on the Customize button and choose Options. Then, on the Display tab of the Options dialog, I'll click Colors. In the Drawing Window Colors dialog, in the context list, I'll choose Command Line. Now, I can choose any of the command line interface elements and adjust their colors.